Nathan, over there, that is the 2012 Toyota Avalon, and right here in front of me is the brand new Avalon. Do you remember the old Toyota slogan? Uh, let's do something. No, it's moving forward. Uh, now with the 2013 Avalon, Toyota is introducing a brand new slogan. Do you know what that is? Uh, jump high. Nope, but I'll tell you coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Guess what? We are in San Antonio, Texas. Toyota brought us out to try out the brand new Toyota Avalon. Nathan, did you know that with the new Avalon, Toyota's going to introduce their new corporate slogan? Do you know what it is? Oh, what a feeling. No, dude, man, that was like 20 years ago. No, let's go places. <laughs> okay, so let's take this and go someplace. It used to feel like a bowl of jello was under your ass. Now it feels tighter, a little bit more European-like. Around the corners, especially here in Texas Hill Country, I can feel some of the undulation that's going on beneath me. It's not horrible, believe are you, me. Are you saying it's sporty, Nathan? Yeah, it's sportier than it used to be. All right, Nathan, here's the deal with the Avalon. Do you know what the average age of the Toyota Avalon buyer is? 100. No, no, it's 68 which is getting up there. So with this new model, they wanted to make it a little bit more youthful. I think the words they used were sleek, elegant, distinctive. So what does it look like to you from the front? Uh, first of all, I think it's handsome, but you know what it reminds me of? The new Tesla Model S. I don't know, it kind of looks like it. Dude, it looks like a whale shark, one of those big sharks that scoops up plankton. Look at the front of that thing. I still think it looks kind of cool. I mean, it's a hell of a lot better than the old one. The side profile, Nathan, it doesn't work as well for me. It looks like the front of the car and the back of the car belong to two different vehicles. Really? Because I really like the thick character line that goes all the way through, nose to tail. It looks like they had to do some complex bending in order to make it. It's kind of nice. Nathan, the back end styling reminds me of Ford Fusion meets Angry Birds. Angry... It's sleek, it's nice, it's not all that unique. In fact, I think it looks a little bit like the Hyundai Azera, one of the vehicles it competes with. All right, Angry Birds meets Hyundai Azera. <laughs> hey, back here in the non-hybrid version, there's a huge trunk, yeah. 16 cubic feet of space. Now, I would normally stuff Nathan in there, but he hurt his back uh, lifting, so uh, I'm gonna let you off the hook this time, Nathan. I appreciate that, but it wouldn't be a problem for me to hop in there. 3.5 liters, 268 horsepower, and 248 pound-feet of torque in a nice little V6 package that, quite frankly, gives this car some serious legs. Yeah, but is it direct injected? No, it's not. Toyota doesn't believe in that. Oh, come on. you got to believe <laughs> well, in it. It's not in this car, no. All right, Nathan, if it's sportier, that should mean faster. Let's see at sea level how fast it goes here to succeed with two guys in the car. Are you in sport mode? Uh, yes, I'm in sport mode, but that makes no difference because that's only for steering. All right. Turn the air conditioner off. Go for it, dude. <laughs> oh, a lot Ooh. of wheel spin. Look at that thing pull. Half of a mile right turn onto TPC. Oh my. You know, we can't make that right turn because we're going dude, way dude. too fast. <laughs> Unbelievable, huh? Let them know. What do we get? 7.46, and that was an impromptu run with two people in the car. This thing's got some balls. Where well, we see an opportunity is targeting some younger buyers. And so we'll be targeting a 40 to 60 year old buyer, but it has to start with the product. And what we know from those buyers, um, from listening to them, is they want more expressive styling. They want more um, technology in the car. And so we've included things like our in-tuner navigation systems. Toyota has gone to great lengths to make this interior more inviting and less chintzy than the old one. And you can really see it here with the hand stitching that they put on the dash, Probably the nicest interior I've ever been in that was under the name Toyota. Yeah, but how about the Lexus ES? I mean, this is basically a competitor. Yes, but I'm just saying Toyota. Lexus, on the other hand, obviously nicer. And that's the thing. They don't want to go over the Lexus ES, which, by the way, they share a lot of components. They wanted to complement it. So you go up to this. This is the top level of Toyota. Then you work your way up to the ES. You know, this car is truly um, a game changer for us. You know, first of all, this car was designed, engineered, it'll be manufactured, sold, and serviced in the United States. 
The Toyota Avalon is in fact the biggest sedan the Toyota builds, and yet with the seat all the way back, the passenger seat, my legs don't fit here, Nathan. I'm surprised this is so, well, tight back here. It's not that tight. See, I, my seat's all the way back. I'm over six feet tall, and I fit very comfortably behind myself. Your problem is you're freakishly tall, so that's why you don't fit so good. Well, it does have a pretty good value point. It starts at 31000 and goes all the way up to 40000 for the Limited, which is the model that we're sitting in. There are a lot of amenities. There are. You got a lot for the money, including rear climate control and rear heat seats, which is not bad, although Hyundai's been doing that for a little while. Dude, we're in Texas. Turn off those heated seats. I <laughs> know, seriously, turn it off. So the new Avalon competes with big family sedans. Think of cars like the Chrysler 300, the Ford Taurus, the Hyundai Azera, or Genesis all the cars that are classic American sedans. And if you're interested in one, it will be in the dealerships on December 1st of this year. So what makes the Avalon unique in my mind is that it's now stylish, both on the inside and on the outside. And unlike you recently said, it's no longer a rolling bingo parlor for 68 year olds. That's right, this car is no longer a fat Camry either. It seems like it has its own identity. It has great style inside and out. But before we can give it a rating of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, we want to spend some time with it back in Colorado. And of course, we'll stuff Nathan into the truck just to make sure that he fits. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Don't forget to subscribe. Because we make videos every single day. Damn, we fly around the country, we make videos. What a life we lead. See you next time. All right, my take on the car. Yeah, it's a lot more youthful but there's still a part of me that wants to go play golf. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I don't play golf, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. Nathan, do my eyes deceive me, but is that a paddle shifter I see poking out behind the steering wheel? Yeah. Grandma and Grandpa can understand. saying, hey, this is fun. You know, it's, it, there are paddle shifters. They're small plastic units. Um, yeah, I don't really see the purpose of them in an Avalon. I guess they wanted to up the sports feel. But you know what? This has a six-speed automatic transmission, and it's a damn good one. And thank you, Toyota, for not going to a CVT. But you also have it on the actual shifter that you can go up and down. I don't really see the necessity of having it in an Avalon, but I guess there's some people out there who want to play with the paddles. Now, today's modern automotive amenities include things like heated and cooled seats, which this has, and my favorite, a heated steering wheel. Where Oops. is it? Where is it? <laughs> it's got the sunshade. It's got the uh, blind spot monitoring. It's got the sport mode. It's got the paddle shifters, but where is the heated steering wheel? Tell me, where? Oy vey. All right, Nathan, what's the new Toyota logo that'll be introduced with this new Avalon? Let's go places. And where are we going? Oh, nowhere near that pig.